There are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to life on the road for musicians. It's often portrayed as this glamorous experience, and while it certainly can be, oftentimes it's not like that. In this video, I want to show you clips from various interviews I've done where musicians discuss what life is really like on the road. And I'm also going to take you inside a tour bus and show you what life is like there. All these interviews were for my documentary, Rock is Dead. If you want to see the full documentary, Rock is Dead, it's linked below. Cheers. Cheers. Offer handshake. Can I get you guys to show me a little bit of the tour bus? Sure. That'd be cool. So what is life like on this bus? Well, we have a group chat called 12 Dicks on a Bus. It's a cramped lifestyle. It's not, I mean, it's the best way to tour, I think. I'd rather do this than having to fly between gigs because we do get to sleep in the 12 bunks. Um, it's fairly luxurious. It's one of our bunk mates, Kenny. What's up? You're on camera. Hey, man, I'm one of those dicks in a bus. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it looks kind of messy right now, but... Uh, it's, 12, it's this guy's fault, right? People, yeah. It's all my fault. Actually. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's yeah. I have this thing where I like to keep most of my stuff here <laughs> and over here and stuff. So that's Sorry. funny. I saw you guys have a PlayStation. Are you guys yeah. gamers? Three PlayStations. Uh, three, PlayStations. Yeah, three PlayStations. And what do you play? Oh man, let's see. Red Dead, Red Red Dead Redemption. Redemption Two. That game's everywhere. God of War. Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat happened last night. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you guys played that one. Last That's night. about it so far. The racing game we started playing. Yeah, we've really been big into. It's win it. winter tours. There's more gaming than summer tours. Summer tours, you're, you go outside and you exactly. do stuff. But when you it's go negative, go outside and ride yeah. bikes. It's yeah. Funny. Well, you're winter in Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So what's behind door number one? Oh God, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid. <laughs> <laughs> this is the moment. Home sweet home. Am I right? Oh, it's not that bad. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. You can turn the light on. Oh, cool! So this is where you guys sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think is there another couch, interview in the back? Doing uh, I don't know. Podcast, yeah. Cool. Um, you can you can open up and just be quiet and film. And... Oh, of course. Yeah. They're filming. Oh, just... oh, oh, so. yeah. Secret room. Hey, I don't like your rude comments on Instagram. <laughs> We're just doing a little doc back here. Okay. Cool. Yeah, just yeah, getting you... life on the bus. Yeah, exactly. I'm Daniel. Danny. Nice to meet you, man. Oh, cool. Nice to meet you, dude. Yeah, Adam. Daniel. Nice to meet you, man. Cheers. That's pretty much it. It's like the size of a you know stu small studio apartment. We got 12 people living on it for six Jeez. weeks. There's a bathroom. Is it good sale? Well, this is a beautiful tour bus. I hope you guys uh, keep playing Mortal Kombat. <laughs> okay, last question actually. Who's the best uh, Mortal Kombat player? That's important. Uh, Kenny so. says he is, and I, I think I believe. Well, him. I used to play a lot when I was 11. Okay. Um, and I haven't played since then, but I think the muscle memory is there. <laughs> so um, I would assume that I'm the best. I don't actually know, but I, I would assume that I'm the best. You'd be so I'm good at like... <laughs> what's that guy saying? Post sports game. <laughs> <And you're> probably, <laughs> our stage manager, Mo, is probably yeah, going to give you a Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. Man. Cheers. What are the realities of being famous, if I may ask? Mm. That's fun. <laughs> no, but um, I don't try to think about it that much. I think the one thing that... that, that gives it toll you know the touring and the music life is all you know um you're a lot away from home and you don't have routine i think routine is one thing that gets difficult you know touring is difficult no like it's difficult being on the road without uh, it's hard to build a routine you know you're like you're in different time zones now you're here next week we're in new york connecticut costa rica and then the week after we're in europe and then we're in asia and it's like all over the place so what's it like being a touring band how's life on the road so uh, we were just talking about it on the way here, actually. It's the most consistently inconsistent job in the entire world. You never know what the next day is going to be. For example, tonight we're going to leave at 10 p.m. and we're going to go from here in Toronto to New York City. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do about six hours of press. We're going to go home for four days, which is probably the four days out of the four weeks of the year that we're going to be home. So uh, I think, I think uh, it's a lot harder than I think a lot of people understand yeah it's it's like you said not necessarily harder or easier but it's just not what they think you know and it's i could sit here all day and probably tell you a bunch of things you know we're young so it's you know it's even different at that point too it's 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 almost unrelatable you were in a band with your brother at one point in time yeah um, is it what's it like working with your your family like, oh, it's, it's great. You know, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. Of course, we can fight <laughs> a lot and, you know, have our arguments. But with family, you always you always can trust the other person. We know what each other is thinking without having to say it. If I write an idea, that he, I'll know whether he likes it or not immediately because we've always written together. 
um, also there's no there's no pleasantries there. You know, if one of us writes an idea the other doesn't like, it's you know you don't you can just cut through all of that and, and get to the point. So it's great. It's we've always worked really really well together. And now my brother is the more organised of us, and I get to tour and do and do this side of things while he takes care of the business side. So it's very symbiotic. I feel like the music business has changed completely since the rise of Facebook and Instagram yeah. and that sort of thing. Uh, what are your thoughts on how that's changed the business? Definitely. I think that social media has completely changed the business. And I think that that's what took a lot of the money away from the major the major labels. Um, and that's what stopped bands from having so much money heavily invested in making their albums and stuff. People had to then make their money from touring as opposed to making the money from record sales. And that's just changed the way that everyone looks at touring because instead of touring being the side fun thing where people are making millions off sales, now you've got to like cut costs on touring. So people are making condensed versions of their bands or putting things on backing track or, you know, getting DJs to tour with them as opposed to traveling with six or seven people. It's just, it's not viable so much anymore unless you're Coldplay or something. I think that it all started perhaps when when everything became, you know, Spotify and downloads and where the, the record sales just weren't there anymore. I think unless you're one of the top rock bands in the world that can survive um, just through shows, there's no record sales there to sustain bands to, that want to just keep touring just for the love of it. So really you have to make your money out of touring now. If you're going to be making music and you're doing that as a main source of your income, you have to be making the money from touring. So uh, beforehand, rock bands, I think, would make a lot of money from album sales and royalties, and touring was just the side thing. But now that it's the main thing, you have to you have to kind of condense and be able to travel with one or two people and a USB stick, <laughs> you know, and some sound effects or whatever, instead of, instead of having a whole bunch of, of crew on the road.